Hello, and welcome to the Ellie Chowns MEP podcast. My name is Tom Harris. This episode was recorded on Friday the 19th of July, when Ellie looked back on a busy week in the European Parliament in Strasbourg and spoke about what a day in the life of an MEP is like. We also discussed lobbying, her first ever speech in the European Parliament, and some of her plans for getting out and about, meeting lots of people all across the West Midlands during the summer recess. I started by asking her what her highlights of the week had been. Well, yeah, it's been busy, definitely. So um, one of the key things that happened this week was the election of the president of the commission, Ursula von der Leyen, on Tuesday. But also this was the first week of kind of normal business. So we had um, some debates, some motions and some votes. So I began to get a bit more of a sense of what Parliament looks like when it's operating normally. So what's it like uh, a day in the life of an MEP? For example, on on the day that uh, uh, Mrs. von der Leyen was elected, what time did you get up? What time did you get there? What was the voting process like? Um, Oh, well, I don't think there's a standard day in the life of an MEP, to be honest. But um, so on that Tuesday, I guess I got up at quarter to seven. I got there at about quarter to eight. We had a UK delegation meeting at 8 a.m., which is our normal thing on Tuesday in Strasbourg. Um, and then uh, at nine, we were in the plenary session. So from nine to 12.30, we first had the speech from uh, Ursula von der Leyen and then kind of um, speeches from all of the different political groups. So the speaking time is divided up according to the size of your political group. And then within your group, people kind of make a request if they want to have a bit of speaking time. So, of course, the leadership sort of goes first and then various people get the opportunity to make little speeches. And then at the end of it all, um, Mrs von der Leyen um, responded again. So we had a three and a half hour session of that in the morning. Um, and then in the afternoon, we had a group meetings. So all of the political groups getting together to discuss the situation. Um, But also I spent a bit of time, I think that day I had a meeting with representatives of the Federation of Small Business. So of course there are uh, lots of people who want to meet us all the time. Um, And I also went along to a meeting about the Discover EU programme, which is free interrailing for young people to help them learn about the rest of Europe. So that was in the afternoon. And then again, at 6pm, we went back into the plenary session in the hemicycle, the chamber, um, for the actual vote for Miss von der Leyen. Um, Then, in fact, I stayed at the office after that working until about half past nine, I think. And then got the tram back into town and um, went along to the very last moment of a reception at Strasbourg City Hall where the city was welcoming MEPs. Actually, I was far too late. Everybody had pretty much gone home. Uh, So, you know, it was a really full working day. Blimey. Yeah, it sounds like it. Um, So uh, so you met you said you met with the Federation of Small Businesses. Now, uh, this is lobbying. Uh, I, I guess this could be classed of, as lobbying. So does does that involve them uh, plying you with uh, champagne and posh canapes? No, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, none of us had anything at all to drink. Uh, we had sort of uh, half an hour maximum sitting around a table um, in, in one of the members' cafes. Um, I mean, I get invitations all the time from organisations that want to speak to me. And um, in fact, I'm going to be completely transparent about that. There's this tool called LobbyCal that we can use to publish the details of all of our meetings. And I've just had that set up this week. So hopefully... Very, very soon, all of my meetings will be will be showing. And of course, as Greens, we've got a commitment only to meet with organisations that are registered in the transparency register. So we're totally transparent about who we're meeting. Now, for me, um, I met this week with uh, the Federation of Small Businesses and with Make UK, which is the kind of manufacturing industries um sort of industry group um kind of alongside you know the federation the the group of the chamber of commerces and the cbi and those other industry bodies make uk is the sort of manufacturing side of things and um, i'm meeting with them because of course in the west midlands manufacturing industry is so important and uh, both of those organizations have got really kind of you know important 
roles to play. Greens have always been very strong in terms of supporting small business. And we're one of the reasons that, you know, Brexit is such a bad idea is because it would be so devastating to our economy. So I think it's really important to meet those um, those groups. And in fact, I'll be, you know, tweeting a little bit about that later today, having met them. Um, but, I, you know, we do need to be careful about choosing who it is that we meet. And of course, I haven't got endless time. So um, I'm sure, you know, there's there's going to be. Uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm just going to have to decide who I who I can manage to spend time with so the federation of small businesses uh taking a wild stab in the dark here but was brexit mentioned at all during the, the conversation yes yeah of course we talked about brexit i mean one of the you know one of the things i talked about with the federation of small businesses was that one of the bits of legislation that the eu has led on that they're really keen on is this thing called the late payments directive so for small businesses you know they're really dependent on kind of a good sort of level of cash flow and sometimes they can find that big businesses in particular are very slow to pay their bills to small business so the late payments directive was a bit of EU legislation that came in a few years ago and that they very much support because it, it means that small businesses have got that kind of leverage to be able to say hey guys you know you need to pay your bills on time and we can all understand how that's you know, that's important and useful. So we talked a little bit about that. Just one example of useful EU legislation that's strongly supported by small business. And on Wednesday, you made your first ever speech in the European Parliament. That's right. Yes. Um, Wednesday morning in the debate about the upcoming Finnish presidency. Well, not upcoming, actually. They've already started. So the the Finns hold the presidency of the European Council for the current six month period, July to December. Um, and so the new Finnish Prime Minister, Antti Rinne, came and de- gave a speech on Wednesday morning, and we had a sort of two hour debate on that as well. Now, um, I wasn't successful in getting kind of um, official speaking time, but there's this thing called catch the eye at the end of the session, where if you catch the eye of the chair of the session, you can speak. But actually, you can't just kind of wave your paper during that period and say, please, can I speak? You actually need to go down to the front Um, in advance and say you'd like a speaking slot so that's what I did and I got a minute to talk so I'd prepared a little speech I didn't know whether I'd get to deliver it or not until right up until I was called Um, and I just spoke to kind of to call on Prime Minister Renner to do everything that he can to make sure that the European Council moves forward in terms of ambition on climate change and also to ask for his support and Europe-wide support for those of us in the UK that don't see a contradiction between British and being European, those of us that know that Brexit would be an absolute disaster, and those of us who, say, who you know, we want the Europeans to stand with us to counter Brexit, because actually, you know, Brexit isn't just a little local difficulty in Britain, it's part of a campaign against the whole idea of international cooperation and so you know if the Brexiteers win here in the UK our point is that there will be other countries that then face you know similar pressures so we really need to to hold fast together with our European neighbours. Yes and it would seem that there are some members of parliament who also see themselves as uh, also being Europeans. There was a defeat for the government in the House of Commons yesterday Uh, with a motion which looks like it's going to block Boris Johnson from being able to prorogue Parliament in order to force through a no-deal Brexit. Yes, indeed. And, you know, thank goodness for that. But, you know, to be honest, isn't it extraordinary that we have come to this point that Parliament is having to say to, you know, the potential next Prime Minister, no, actually, it's not okay to suspend parliamentary democracy. I mean, the fact that Boris Johnson could even consider this to be, a, 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 you know, a possibility, beggars belief, to be honest. So I'm very glad that there are at least a few Conservatives who kind of found the courage to stand up for what is best for their country and, you know, to ensure that that isn't going to be possible for Johnson to prorogue Parliament. It's, it is a relief that there are still some putting uh, the good of the country before uh, the good of their party and themselves. But enough of 
parliamentary business, of course, uh, the European Parliament has now gone into its summer recess, which means that uh, it's going to be August very soon. And uh, then you're going to be out and about, in fact, before August, at the end of July, you're going to be out and about getting all over the West Midlands region, attending lots and lots of events. What, t- please tell us, what, is, what are your plans? Have you, what, have you got any uh, events that you're concretely lined up to, to attend? Mm. Well, actually, technically, Parliament hasn't yet gone into recess in the sense that um, most MEPs, I think, will be in Brussels next week for committee meetings, or many MEPs anyway. So some of the committees that were formed last week, you remember I talked about it in the first episode of the podcast, some of those committees have got meetings in the coming week. And indeed, um, both of my committees, International Trade and Development, have got short committee meetings. But very unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to attend them because I had a family holiday booked with my two kids, the only holiday that I'm going to get with them this summer. And although I tried to make other arrangements, it's not possible to cancel it. And in fact, I I need and want to spend some time with my kids. So I'm going to be in France, but with my kids um, next week. And my Brussels assistants are going to be attending those meetings um, on my behalf and feeding back to me. Um, But yes, then after that, the Parliament has five weeks of recess, but I'm going to actually spend all of it out and about in the West Midlands. I've got a great team of people here in the West Midlands who are helping to set up a programme of events for me. Um, So the very first thing, Monday the 20th, Ninth, I'm going to be um, actually filming a slot with ITV Central on a piece they're doing on um, the HS2 project, uh, which the Greens um, oppose, clearly. Um, I'm then going to be um, also meeting other media organisations. And then on the next day, the Tuesday, I'll be speaking um, in Birmingham, in fact, at my old uh, university, University of Birmingham, at the People's Vote Rally in the West Midlands. But Then after that, I've got a whole set of events kind of lined up, Um, community events, festivals and fairs. Um, I've got meetings lined up with um, some of the local authorities in the region. Um, uh, And then come September, I'm going to be going and talking in schools and universities and so forth. So I'll have a full programme sort of, you know, outlined. I'll update the website with details of what I'm doing but I'm basically aiming to be out and about across the whole region talking to as many people as possible having conversations a bit like this one with you actually just explaining what it is that I do as an MEP how the parliament works how democratic it is and how much influence we actually have I mean a lot of people don't realize I think that the you, the members of the European Parliament often have a lot more influence over legislation than the members of the UK Parliament because law can't be made without us agreeing to it and we can change law. We have that influence. So that's, you know, that's my plan for the summer. I think it'll be great, actually, because it's also for me an opportunity to discover corners of the West Midlands that maybe I haven't been to before. And, you know, it's summer, so people will be out and about and happy to talk about what they love about their region as well, I think. That's all for this week, but we'll be back with more updates from Ellie very soon. In the meantime, you can follow Ellie on Facebook and Twitter by searching for at Ellie Chowns MEP or visit her website at elliechownsmep.org.uk. And if you'd like to get in touch, you can email me at tom.harris at elliechownsmep.org.uk. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.